So coming out of the World Economic Forum, one of our favorite groups to cover here is something new and different that nobody should be prepared for. The cyborg age is already here, just not evenly distributed. What they published was this, augmented tech can change the way we live, but only with the right support and vision. Because if we don't get what we want, we'll just call everybody else incompetent and incapable of, you know, being able to accept what we'd like. Coming from Klaus Schwab, you know, the man who coined it, you'll own nothing and be happy. The author of the fourth industrial revolution within it, it states the fourth industrial revolution is, however, fundamentally different. It is characterized by a range of new technologies that are fusing the physical, digital, and biological worlds, impacting all disciplines, economies, and industries, and even challenging ideas about what it means to be human. Because obviously we don't understand what it means to be human, at least we don't fall within his description of that. Well, what he's proposing now is augmented reality like you haven't seen. Some would call it transhumanism, making you better, of course, because you're not good enough the way God created, so we're going to help you. And before you say it, this isn't about medical devices that are saving lives. Oh no, it's beyond that. Actually, within what I'm about to show you, it says for perfectly healthy individuals, even children. So sit back and be prepared for what this fourth industrial revolution, another segment of that movement, is all about. Because, well, you're not good enough and you shouldn't be happy about it. Now, my name is Justice Knight. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please just take a few seconds to do that. You'll see the subscribe button just below. Help me share your comments. Always appreciated. I put up a membership platform. Helps me to continue to bring these videos. If you can join, I'd certainly appreciate it. Or as another option, go to restrictedrepublic.com, the platform Lisa Haven and I created to bring you all the news, unfiltered, uncensored, no commercials, no interruptions, stone cold hard researched facts. The news you can't get anywhere else right now to take advantage of that. Put in real journalism in monthly checkout. That's going to get you 14 days for free. Plus, you ready for it? $3.99 a month for two years. Take advantage of it. We're going to take down that offer soon, but we want to help everybody through this, well, Biden recession and to fight against guys like this. Um, it's at the end what, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. So as I promised you, that's right, you need to change your physical being because it's just not good enough, according to Klaus Schwab. But back to the article of Augmented Tech Can Change the Way We Live, but Only with the Right Support and Vision, published by World Economic Forum. As you see there on the top, let's dive into the details. It starts out innocent enough. Augmented reality technology has the ability to transform society and individual lives, particularly in healthcare and mobility. They're always there to help. As much as visual and hearing aids are part of our lives today, implant technologies could become the norm in the future. Stakeholders in society, oh, one of their favorite coined phrases, but trust me, you're not a stakeholder in society. Oh, no, they are. And we'll need to agree on how to ethically make these amazing technologies a part of our lives. Of course we do. But things get weird now. Superheroes have been dominating big and small screens for a while, but there's a subtle change happening. Many children expect to develop superpowers themselves, and Klaus Schwab is there to help. He's there to help your child become a superhero. These expectations may sound unattainable, but we're already making the first strides towards an augmented society. Oh, those words should send chills up your spine. This has been warned about for some time. SteveQuail.com. If, you, if you're unfamiliar with Steve, and this isn't a paid advertisement, this is just someone who supports us and we support him, has published so many books on the topic. He has an amazing catalog, but two in particular that I enjoyed were Terminated and also Xenogenesis. If you want to learn all about the move to make us into cyborgs better than human, well, Steve covers every topic that's going on behind the scenes. Get over to stevequail.com. But let's move forward. Augmented reality doesn't end there. Your phone might feel like a part of your body, but it's not put in through surgery. They almost make that sound unfortunate, don't they? Well, 
to them it is. Technology will become more intertwined with the body in the form of implants. Told you that didn't take long, did it? But it will also seamlessly integrate with your environment. You might have sensors in a chair, for example, or many other places. And you see the nifty YouTube video below the presentation of which, within it states, exoskeletons help you carry heavy loads more than you can possibly carry. I know that brings visions of super soldiers, doesn't it? Or AR goggles enhance your surroundings because you, mere human, aren't capable or quick enough. So we must augment your reality with the phones that we already hold. And of course, they always put in the chips that are a good medically sound device, maybe. A translation chip for dyslexia sounds great, but then it goes sideways, more towards the biblical nature of things. Add them to completely healthy individuals, and such technology can augment. You are not good enough, but Klaus Schwab has a way to make you better. He'll just augment completely healthy individuals. Now let's think about completely healthy individuals recently who decided to augment something. It didn't work out so well. Well, topics you're not allowed to discuss here, so we'll move on. That's it. Restricted. That's why we created the platform. Are we moving towards a brave new world, he goes on to state, as scary as chip implants may sound. They form a part of natural evolution. Oh, there we have it. Because God's creations aren't good enough, so we're going to help you evolve into something entirely different. Oh, I'll get into every detail of this. Hearing aids and or glasses no longer carry a stigma. They are accessories and even considered fashion items. Likewise, implants will evolve into a commodity. If that sounds unlikely, then consider the alternatives we currently use. Drugs often show unwanted effects because they affect multiple biological processes at the same time. Someone on long-term medication may want to try an implant that sends very precise electrical or optical pulses instead. Well, who's it sending the pulses to? Oh, that's right, it's there to help. It can't possibly control. Well, if it can control, if you can control it, I, I guess there's ways it could control you, right? But don't be concerned, everything will be okay. It's Klaus Schwab, what do you have to worry about? This doesn't already exist. Chip that it is in the tablet, and once you take the tablet, and dissolves into your stomach, sends a signal that you took the tablet. So imagine the applications of that, the compliance. Did, did, he did, <laughs> he did just say that. Imagine the compliance, because you're incapable of taking your own pills and medication, so we at Pfizer will assure you have to take it. Oh, it's already here. It's surrounding us. They don't even hide it anymore. By the way, if you don't know who that was, that was the CEO of Pfizer. <sighs> Strange reality, huh? Speaking of pills, remember this display? Have you ever seen this one? That's all the pills that these alleged people took in their lifetime. It's called cradle to grave, by the way. The two 13 meter length of fabric illustrate the medical stories of men and women. These stories are based on the composite patient records of eight individuals at specific times of life. Each piece contains over 14,000 drugs. Wow, and based on the technology he just proposed, that's a scary thought of exactly what may be floating around now. All in the mind. Back to the World Economic Forum article, Augmented Reality. Brain implants take us one step further and allow us to tap straight into the body's operating system. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, you can't make this up. This is cryptic. We have already started interfacing with the brain using neural probes to mitigate symptoms of epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, or depression. Again, things that would have medical basis to them. But <laughs> don't worry, they're not going to stop there. Of course they wouldn't. Most applications will remain based on medical necessity rather than a mind-reading tool. Why do you need to put that in there? Hmm. And of course, they bring up the example of Neuralink. No different. Elon Musk working on something to say, but Elon Musk's line has been, if they're going to do this, then I have to create something to help you to keep up with it. Yeah. 
We'll just leave that alone for a minute. But don't worry, Elon has a Halloween announcement coming up about his Neuralink. Progress update show and tell on October 31st on Halloween. Well, isn't that appropriate? Oh, my goodness. You, you cannot stop but to draw the parallels in so many things here. Elon Musk teases the show and tell update on Halloween. At a basic level, Newsweek article about Neuralink states, the stated ambition of the company has always been to develop a brain-computer interface, or BCI, a gadget that connects the brain to a computer. That's exactly what I want my brain connected to. Recently, the company has become more transparent with its website stating it's currently designing a neural implant called the Link that will allow users to control a computer or mobile device anywhere you go. Why carry a phone? Just blink an eye and you can make a phone call. Have a little twitch and maybe you'll accidentally text. I mean, sounds like amazing. <laughs> That's the convenience I need in my life right now. But then back to that YouTube video by World Economic Forum. Of course, they put instead boundaries will be drawn in the ethical debate, but they're not happy about that. They just want the technology to go through. They don't want ethics standing in the way. How dare ethics or morality or humanity or religion get in the way of their goals and ambitions to, to, never mind, to help augment reality. This has been discussed before, Council of Europe, governance of technologies, assessing the relevance and sufficiency of the existing human rights framework to address the issues raised by the applications of neural technologies. Not easy for me to say. Within the article, it goes on to state applications in the field of neurotechnology raise issues of privacy, freedom, autonomy, integrity, and discrimination, cognitive liberty, mental privacy, and mental integrity of psychologically psychological continuity. But well, it's not that we should be concerned about. Eh, Klaus Schwab says that's an inconvenience. How dare you? Nothing ever happens with, well, oh, I guess it does. AI and manipulation of social and digital media. In the article, it states that platforms wanted to know users better than they know themselves. What scares them? Makes them laugh. What they search on Google or what spelling mistakes they make. This information produces a psychological profile of potential voters, which can be used by companies to target them with information or misinformation they would be sensitive to. We're not even going to go into the racial bias that some of these systems have already illustrated. The amplification of specific information can also have psychological consequences on the well-being of individuals. Imagine just force-feeding the wrong amount of information into somebody who maybe has a tendency to accept it. Boy, imagine the control you, I mean, imagine the augmented reality that they could enjoy. Instagram claims that they do not want the people to feel like it's a competition. Research shows, uh, it drives me insane, there needs to be competition in the world. We see what happens now that you've attempted to take competition out of the world. Nobody competes for anything, not even for a job or extra work. Now they'd rather stay at home and just take, well, Biden's handouts. Research shows that when a post does not get a lot of likes, users feel bad. There's no feeling bad. Why would you want to make yourself better naturally? No, don't worry. Klaus Schwab has a solution. We saw negative psychological effects, particularly in certain segments of the population, such as teenage girls. The experiment gathered attention and company enjoys great PR until it was finally revealed from investigation and engagement went down only slightly, prompting Instagram to return the likes feature. Hmm. No more thumbs down on YouTube either. There wasn't any likes on Instagram. A society that has no judgment sounds perfect, but it changes a lot of things also. The Facebook files, the Wall Street Journal. Now, they actually went on to complain in this article that they weren't doing enough to control m miscommunication, misinformation, but they pointed out some good things too. The program known as CrossCheck or XCheck was intended as a quality control measure for high-profile accounts. Today, it shields millions of VIPs from the company's normal enforcement. So I guess this augmented reality and AI that would dominate, and computers can choose what you see and what you don't see. What you hear and what you hmm, want to hear and don't want to hear. So basically, they can change your reality by saying they're going to improve your reality through augmented reality controlled by whom? Because if they're deciding what augmented reality is better, guess what? 
you become a slave to the machine. Facebook increasingly suppresses political movements it deems dangerous. It's deciding, not you. And the World Economic Forum, trust me, would be no different. But now things get a little bit biblical. An indispensable wearable device may be implanted under the skin as a first approach or in the belly if needed. For examples, for patients suffering from urine loss, a small stimulation device tucked away in the pelvic area constitutes a more elegant and comfortable solution than wearing incontinence pads. They always try to wrap it in something legitimate before they get to the, well, go ahead and complete the sentence. Next, there may be other implants that influence the nerves of the peripheral nervous system or the information highways that connect the spinal cord and brains to organs or limbs. Now, that went wrong and it stopped augmenting reality, Could sounds like that could also stop reality. But we shouldn't be concerned. Klaus Schwab has it all covered. Electrical stimulation of the vagus nerve, the superhighway that originates in the brain, is rumored to be a miracle therapy for treatment-resistant depression or an ever-growing problem of you being able to move and have your freedoms, rights, or liberties. I'm sorry. But now the ethical debate comes up. That nasty thing that stands in the way. <laughs> Not as big as the Bible would stand in the way, but... We'll finish up here. Ethics should not be preached from an academic ivory tower, rather overarching and independent institutions, such as we, the World Economic Forum, should guide policymakers and researchers in the augmented societies on the do's and don'ts and help build the ethical framework of augmented reality technology. You see, they don't believe governments can do anything. No, they believe that only one government can do everything and help control society better. Klaus Schwab has been consistent, as most of the globalists have been within that thought process. They can rule better than we, the people. They truly believe that, too. But now they wouldn't go as far as to tap on biblical prophecy, now would they? Hmm. Of course not. Many of us have seen these images, know these images well. Revelations. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. But let's focus on, in the first sentence, to receive a mark in their right hand because the World Economic Forum would never dare tread on imagery or ideology or cross over biblical scripture, would they? Well, within the presentation itself, future technologies will become more intertwined with our bodies in the form of implants. And if you just look at the picture close enough, you'd realize that's the right hand. My friends, you can't avoid things like this when you see them. You have to point them out because they put it right in your face. Well, they try to change your mind or augment your reality or make you feel, you know, insignificant in their bigger order plan. But don't. Just keep your scriptures close. Keep your reality closer and make sure you're the one controlling it not the AI or technology that they propose can make you better because you're perfect as you are. And I want to put a disclaimer also because I don't disbelieve in medical devices that can make you or improve you if you have something broken. Of course not. But if you're perfectly healthy, this stuff, I'd stay far, far away from. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless, Justice Knight. Signing out.